In the last lesson, we talked about tap stroke, combining that together with the accent stroke to create the single stroke, two height hand motion. We want to be able to play accent patterns. High accent notes and low taps. So if you haven't mastered that tap stroke and combining it with the accents, go to the previous lesson and really get this down. The next step is to put the hands together and start playing accent patterns using this tap accent motion in each hand to create really cool patterns with both hands. Uh, now there's two exercises that we're going to go through. One is based in 16th notes and the other is based in triplets. So let's look at the let's look at the first measure of this exercise and talk about how to put the hands together correctly. But the first measure is just 16th notes with an accent on one and three and all the rest of the notes are taps. So we're going to practice playing alternating taps. You can actually, this is a really good thing to practice. And I want you to notice that each hand is still doing the down up motion. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. Now when we play an accent, we want to make sure that the accent doesn't disrupt these taps. One, three, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Now, th that's not too, too hard, but the first time people do that, something usually happens, and that is, here comes the accent, it's on its way down, and we've trained our muscles that when one hand is traveling down, the other's traveling up. And th that's perfectly normal. You have to do that when you play alternating strokes. But there's a new set of rules now. And when you're going to play a tap follow following the accent, you can't lift that left hand. It's too many people do this. See that left hand wants to go up. You've got to do this. Accent, tap. Accent, tap. You've got to get control over that first left hand tap. E and uh, two, E and uh, down, 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 down. That left hand just has to wait there. Now I'm telling you right now, this what I'm talking about is the number one reason people never get this right. They drum on and on and on. They practice this stuff for hours and hours and hours and it's not good because they don't identify this one problem. You have to keep this hand down. E and uh, two, E and uh, it's a tap stroke, no in-betweens. It's either a tap or an accent, nothing else. So you got to work on that slow. You might have to do this. Tap. Work with a lot of students that have to practice this for a little bit. And then, and then two notes. And then you can keep going. You can't rush through this. Don't kid yourself and be playing sloppy taps and think you're doing it. You gotta take the time to do this right. Because once you get it down, man, you will be cooking. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. Both strokes have got to remain perfect. Then you can go a little faster. Smooth accent stroke, using that float stroke motion. Keeping those taps down. Notice after the accent, that right stick's got to stop low and match the left hand taps. Go a little faster. And then you start to get up the tempo up a little bit and your taps start to flow all together a little bit more. But you've got to keep the heights under control. Those taps have got to be smooth and even. Now I want to mention one thing really quick here. Um, there are three types of evenness that you can focus on in your drumming. One is stick height. How high are your sticks? They have to match each other. Two is rhythm. The rhythm's got to be even. It can't be... You've got to play even spacing between the notes, even rhythm. The third one is volume. How much sound do you get out of each stroke? You know, are you feather tapping, hardly hitting the drum? Are you playing too hard? I mean, and it's, it all relate, they all connect together. Stick height, rhythm, and volume. But if you'll focus on those three things, especially with regards to your taps, that will help you a lot. Now, the next measure of the exercise brings the left hand in. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a. Uh. All the principles are the same, but now we, gotta, we, now we have an accent on the left hand, so now the right hand's gotta exercise some control. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. The timing and height control of the first tap after the accent is usually where people have trouble. Okay, 
Start slow, gradually speed it up. Then the next two measures are just kind of a variation on that. So I'm going to play the whole exercise now. I'm going to do it with the metronome. I'm going to go even a little slower, back down to about 80 beats a minute. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Okay, that's the exercise. Now, I want you to notice that all of the taps, my goal is to make all of the taps sound the same. It's very, very monotone. You're trying to get this consistency in those taps and not allow the accents to disrupt the taps. A lot of people will get... Yeah, every time they play an accent, the, the taps, it's like hitting the... You know, here comes the taps. They get blown out of the water because the accent is messing up the taps. So if you're having that problem, you got to go back. You got to work on your single hand tap accent motion. You got to put it together slow. You got to get control of the heights. Hold on to your sticks and get that to flow. Let's try it a little bit faster. The whole exercise. I'm going to take it up to 100 beats a minute. One e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a one, two, three, and. Again, three, four. All right, that's the exercise. So start slow, work it up. Once you get it up to a much brighter, let's go up to 120 just so you can hear it at that tempo. It's so much fun to play these tap accent patterns. Okay, now the next exercise is same concept, same principles, but it's based in triplets. And being able to play accented triplets, we worked through all the triplet rhythms in an earlier lesson, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly. Being able to play accents on these triplets, that's real important, you gotta work that. Each hand is doing single-handed triplets. This is why this rhythm is so important to practice. Now, the exercise, if you look at the exercise, it's just a simple, tripl simple triplet pattern. Let's do it slowly. I'm going to take it back down. One, two, three, four. Very cool. Work on those. Master both those exercises. Now the next two exercises you'll see on the webpage in this, in this book, uh, those two are kind of like the preliminary 16th note triplet exercises to help you get your hands flowing and learn how to play accent patterns within the 16th note and triplet context. But the next two exercises are similar to the timing grids in that they're like a mathematical progression. And these are very important to master. The first one we'll call 16th note accent. And all we're going to do is practice playing an accent on one. Then we're going to move it forward a 16th note to E. Then we're going to move it forward another 16th note to AND. And then we're going to move it forward to A. Uh. So, and that would be the four count version. We do four counts of each. I'll do it at 110, two, three, AND. Now, I want you to notice the rhythms and think about a few things with me here because when you, when you get this down and you can play it and keep all the taps consistent and the rhythm even and spaced properly, you're building a rhythmical um, grid inside of your body that is really going to help you in all of the playing that you do down the road. 
And you've got to be able to feel the downbeat even though you're not playing on the downbeat. For instance, the first measure, that's not too hard. We played that pattern in the previous exercise. But the second rhythm is one E and a two, E and a three, E. Well, so many times people just rush through the taps and they turn their E stroke back onto the downbeat. You know, one E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a three, E and a three. And then they just keep rushing and rushing. You can't do that. You've got to sustain the feeling the downbeat. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Counting like I just did can help with that sometime. Going slower with your metronome, but especially those left hand rhythms. One E and a two E and a three E and the one E and a two E and a three E and a really place those where they belong. If you have mastered the 16th note timing rhythms properly, worked on those hard with your metronome, this should come pretty easy because the accents are those one note rhythm variations. But in this context, we're filling, we're filling in all the 16th, note with tap, 16th notes with taps. So it's very cool. Now, the, the second, there's two more parts to this exercise, and that is the twos and the ones. This 4-2-1 pattern is something we apply to a lot of different exercises. It works really great. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're only going to play two counts of each accent before we move it forward in the exercise. And we'll repeat it and do it twice. So the two sound like this. Repeat. Okay. Then the last section is the ones, where we just play one count of each. The ones are really cool. They have kind of this really awesome groove to them and turn back around. You play it four times, but it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Let's try the ones. Now, when you can keep your taps down, even and smooth, and make those accents flow with the groove and with the metronome. Those are a lot of fun to play. Let's put the four, two, fours, twos, and ones together for one, all the way, all the way through the exercise. One complete exercise. One, two, ready, and. All right, 16th note accent, four, two, one. The next accent exercise is triplet accent, four, two, one. Same concept as 16th note accent, but with triplets. Now this, because the, the accents flow from hand to hand inside of the triplets, it creates a little bit different groove. It can be a little more complex and a little more difficult for some people to feel. A good way to do this and make sure you're keeping time is to count out loud as you play. I mean a count and play the fours. Ready, and one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, lee, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one. Accent just moves through the triplet on one, then on la, then on lee. Now let's do the twos. Ready, and one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, two one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, three lolly, one. Now we do that one twice, so it's the same length. Those two are pretty straight ahead. Remember the very first time I heard this exercise, uh, I heard someone play it and I totally got the first two sections, first time I heard it. Then they played the ones and I'm like, uh, what was that? And I had to really listen to it and figure out because we've got three counts because we're moving the, ex we're moving the accent through three notes. So we've only got three counts and then it flips over to the other hand and the second time through starts on the other hand and then it goes, it, so it moves back and forth from hand to hand. So it's a little trickier, but if you just think about the counting of it, it's not, it's not hard, you can do it. Ready, go. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, 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 one. Because we keep moving the accent, we're actually creating kind of groups of four, so the accent stays on the same hand for one repetition, and then it goes to the other hand. Let's do the ones one more time. Ready? Go. 
one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, one. Okay, now let's put the fours, the twos, and the ones together and play triplet accent. Let's do it with the metronome. We'll slow down a little bit. It's 100 beats a minute. Let's count while we play. One, two, ready, go. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly. One lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, two lolly, three 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 lolly, one. Now, you heard me. I didn't stick with the four four time counting. You do whatever feels best to you. But those three count passages seem to make sense to me. I usually end up counting it that way. But you can do it however you want. The important thing is that you really feel the pulse and the cycles of that. Let's go a little bit faster. Go up to 120. One, two, three, four. That's a great exercise. Now, one uh, recommendation is that you really take the time to play that with the metronome slowly, count it out, and feel the groove of those accents. Because many people will memorize the sticking pattern, but in reality, they have no idea where the beat is. They're just playing a series of accents and taps, and they're really not feeling the groove. Because the whole thing's got to relate to this. Got it, got it, got it, got it. But, 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 but. Each of those variations relate to the downbeat. So the twos, bum, bum, ga, ga, ba, ba, dum, bum, ga, ga, da, ba, dum. And the ones, ga, ga, ba, dum, ga, ba, dum, ga, ba, dum, ga, ba, dum. That's the way I hear those rhythms in my head. And they all relate to the downbeat. You got to feel that. So work with your metronome, go slow. By the time you've mastered the single hand motion for taps and accents and can play through all those exercises and feel comfortable with that height control, you got it. Go for it.